following is a first alert weather special. Hurricane season 2024, prepare Mississippi. Proudly sponsored by Mississippi Department of Transportation, Petro Nissan, and Southern Metal Supply. It's hurricane season again, and it's time to prepare. This year, the WLOX First Alert weather team is expanding our storm ready message by bringing you an hour long show and teaming up with our First Alert meteorologist from around the state. Over the next hour, you'll hear from hurricane hunters, get a deep dive in research that USM is doing on hurricane forecasting, and how you can prepare your children to be calm during a storm. Plus, we take a look at how one storm chaser built a hurricane house and how other parts of the state deal with hurricanes, all from our team of great television first alert meteorologists. When storms threaten Mississippi, the coast is the first to feel the brunt of the impacts. That's why it's a good idea to prepare now. Yeah, last year, despite incredibly warm Gulf waters, the upper pattern steered storms away from South Mississippi. The only hurricane to strike the Gulf Coast was Adalia as a Category 3 storm in Florida's Big Bend region. The season was extremely active, however, with 20 named storms ranking fourth for the most named storms. While last year was quiet for Mississippi, we know all too well how bad a single season can be. This year marks 55 years since Camille slammed into the Mississippi coast as a Category 5 hurricane, one of only four Category 5 storms to ever strike the U.S. And this year also marks the 45th anniversary of Hurricane Frederick, which slammed into Jackson and Mobile counties in 1979 as a Category 4 hurricane. Frederick was a reminder that even on the left side of the center of a hurricane, impacts can be extreme. Powerful north winds around Frederick's well-defined eye caused extensive damage to most of Jackson County, including Ingalls Shipyard. Coming up, we'll take you back through our archives to look at some of those storms and the mark they left on South Mississippi. But over recent years, we've seen a disturbing trend with tropical systems rapidly intensifying as they approach the Gulf Coast. Rapid intensification is one of the most difficult things to forecast, but one coast research facility is looking to change that. Late October 2020, South Mississippi is slammed by a fast moving late season storm. Hurricane Zeta unleashes 100 mile per hour wind gust and sends a 7 to 11 foot storm surge flooding roads, homes and businesses. But only 24 hours before, Zeta was just a tropical storm. Hurricane track forecasting has improved dramatically over the years thanks to advancements in computer power, weather models, hurricane hunter missions, satellite and buoy observations. But intensity forecasts still remain a challenge. That is something researchers at the University of Southern Mississippi are hoping to change through a partnership with the renewable energy company, SeaTrack, and this device called the Infinity Float. It's a, a floating uh, platform for making oceanographic measurements that will help us better uh, predict hurricane intensification. One of the factors that can lead to rapid intensification in hurricanes is extremely warm ocean waters. But there is a lack of widespread observations across a vast majority of the ocean, mainly due to cost and maintenance. The Infinity Float is an autonomous device that could help fill that void at a low cost. This is a launch it, set it and forget it kind of thing, and it goes out for X number of months or even years potentially, um, and it makes those measurements. The hope is that additional observations of sea surface temperatures plugged into hurricane models could help improve the forecast for how strong storms may get. The float powers itself through an innovative power harvesting system that converts the difference in temperature from the surface to a depth of about 1,000 meters into electricity. Kind of plateaus off in a couple of thermoclines and ultimately at 500 meters depth it's about 9 degrees. As it bobbles along with the ocean current, it takes temperature measurements from the surface down to its maximum depth to get a profile of how deep the warm waters go. These measurements are relayed back via satellite roughly every six hours. So that's really the innovation here is to provide the long endurance mission compared to today's. There are there are dozens of these devices in the in, in the Gulf today, but they are powered by primary batteries 
and then they don't collect data every day, every six hours, they collect data every 10 days. The temperature data is not being used in hurricane forecast models in real time just yet. SeaTrek and USM currently have one float in the Gulf that was deployed last year. They are already looking forward to a bigger project for the 2025 hurricane season. We have a proposal uh, about a pilot study to NOAA, National Ocean Atmospheric Administration, we hope to deploy uh, maybe on the order of 20 of these devices for the, for the hurricane season next year. SeaTrek says data will be provided to researchers during the 2025 hurricane season for NOAA and the National Data Buoy Center in Hancock County for evaluation. Once they accept the data quality and then quantify the impact, and then the, the following hurricane season 2026, Hopefully it will be operational and then the data will go to the hurricane forecast models in real time. Since 2017, eight major hurricanes have struck the Gulf Coast. While scientists work to improve intensity forecast, this is a reminder on why it is important to prepare now for a hurricane. The Saffir Simpson scale was introduced in the 70s. Its purpose was to estimate storm damage from the winds. Category one causes minimal damage. Twos and threes can be more extensive. Fours and fives are catastrophic. However, some researchers think it's necessary now to add a category six. Their theory? There's an increasing frequency of stronger hurricanes recently. This hypothetical category six would begin at 193 miles per hour. Only five storms fit that criteria, one of them being 2015's Eastern Pacific hurricane Patricia with winds of 215 miles per hour. But is there a difference in catastrophic damage from 215 versus a typical Cat 5 of 160 miles an hour? Not really, according to the National Hurricane Center Director Michael Brennan. He says Category 5 on the Saffir Simpson scale already captures catastrophic damage from wind, so it's not clear that there would be in for another category even if storms were to get stronger. Brennan says they don't want to overemphasize the wind hazard by placing too much emphasis on the category. In fact, a hurricane's danger is more from water, not wind. Over the last decade, more than half of the deaths in tropical systems comes from freshwater flooding, things like rain and rivers. Compare wind to storm surge, and there's about the same amount of deaths. There's even more with surf and rip currents. Add up all of those water, and you see 80% of total, whereas wind has less than 15% of total. The Saffir Simpson scale isn't perfect. Maybe one day it could be changed. For now, Category 6 may not be the answer. One of the most important resources in hurricane forecasting is located in South Mississippi. The hurricane hunters at Keesler Air Force Base risk their lives flying into storms and collecting data that is used to make hurricane forecast models. We got a crew of five. There's a pilot in the left seat, co-pilot in the right seat. We have a navigator on board. We're very unique in the J model. It was designed to be flown with just two pilots and a loadmaster. However, we can get into some really intense weather, as you can imagine. So we have the weather radar on, I mean, the navigator on board that monitors the weather radar to keep us out of the really bad stuff going to and from the hurricane itself. The hurricane hunters fly the Lockheed WC-130J aircraft. It's loaded with instruments needed to gather information from inside and around the storm. The radar, one of the most valuable pieces of equipment on board the aircraft is right here in the nose, just like any other airline or anything. There's some smaller weather instruments and probes on the aircraft, but the bulk of the data extraction from inside the storm comes from the drop sun. This device is actually dropped into the storm. The drop sun collects temperature, humidity, wind information, and pressure data as it falls. The information gathered is sent directly to the National Hurricane Center in real time. The Hurricane Hunter planes also have a Smurf pod that collects weather information. Right up here we have the Smurf pod. We've got about 15 of these in the inventory. They're actually calibrating them right now to get prepared for the storm season. And that white patch on the bottom of the Smurf pod, it's sending that signal down to the surface. It's measuring sea foam activity so we can detect and measure what the wind speed is exactly at the surface. So it's a very, very valuable tool. The data collected by the aircraft and its crew is used to make forecasts and help meteorologists monitor real-time trends within the storms leading up to landfall. 
Outside of hurricane season, the hurricane hunters also fly missions to monitor portions of the atmosphere over the Pacific and the Atlantic Oceans. But June 1st through November 30th is definitely the hurricane hunters' busiest time. Coming up, we'll take you inside the Mississippi Power Storm Center and show you how they prepare for any storm. The forecast cone of uncertainty only tells you where the center of the storm may track. It's possible to experience significant impacts from wind, rain, storm surge, and flooding well outside the cone. 